Hello, wrestling fans, and welcome to Party of 130 for 300 Royal Rumble, a special actual play event honoring 300 episodes of Party of One. Yeah. My name is Taylor LaBresh. I am at Leviathan Files on Twitter. I'm the host of Game Closet, an informal chat show with queer and LGBT plus folks and designer of Riverhouse Games, weird queer tabletop that you can find at riverhousegames.itch.io. And I will be your ring announcer for this evening. This is a live playthrough of Rumble, a two-player RPG of Battle Royales by Tracy Barnett, to be played by Jeff Stormer and Riley Lyra Hopkins. You can find Rumble at theothertracy.itch.io, or check the show notes for more information. The rules of a Royal Rumble are as follows. Two wrestlers begin in the ring. The objective is to throw your opponent over the top rope and have both feet touch the floor. Every two minutes, another wrestler enters until all 30 competitors, all former Party of One characters, have entered. The last fighter standing will be declared the winner. Lastly, before we dive in, I want to say thank you, Jeff, for booking this amazing match. Folks, it's going to be a rowdy one. And personally, Jeff... Thank you for being a friend and an inspiration. At Wrestlepalooza this weekend, held in Minneapolis, Minnesota, by First Wrestling, Eric Cannon gave a stirring speech, welcoming Arya Davari home after his release from WWE. Why bring this up, you might ask? Well, there were two things in that speech I'm going to replicate here. The first is the acknowledgement of recognition. I see you, Jeff Stormer and Jen Frank. I see you nominated for all sorts of rewards. And finally, finally getting a fraction of the recognition you deserve for making Party of One, the second best podcast on the internet behind all my fantasy children. You get that recognition. You're living your dreams and people are noticing and I love that for you. Secondly, I'm going to crib the sentiment of feeling at home without the recognition because I've seen you for five years build this show on hard work, on devotion to fine art, on a respect for the industry on the spirit of greatness. And it's fantastic to see you get rewarded and recognized for this shit, but you've been great without the recognition. And you've created a home for me and many others who come to Party of One. You'll always be home to me, regardless of awards. Though, again, it's fucking rad to see them come. Jeff, Party of One kicks ass. It sets the bar. Thank you for 300 episodes of Party of One. And thank you for what you've built in this house. And with all that said, friends and enemies, let's get ready to podcast. Take it away, Jeff and Riley. Thanks, Taylor. You heard it here first. I am joined at this time by my guest, Riley Hopkins. Riley, thank you so much for joining us at this historic event in the history of sports entertainment. How are you doing today? I'm doing great today, Jeff. I've, you know, I'm always excited to come out here, see the best of the best, see the see the the cream of the crop, and that's what we're gonna get to see today. Um, it's it's a wonder to be here in this ringside announcer booth with you. Uh, we appreciate having you here. Um, we are going to have to battle in about a minute, so uh -huh. like, I'm not looking forward to that. But you know what? If I have to fight anybody in the squared circle, I'm glad that it was you. I cannot wait to beat you into an unrecognizable pulp. But <laughs> until then, right now we're here. The, I've never actually seen a wrestling match that starts with both <laughs> both wrestlers in the announce On table. Commentary, and then that we have would to actually down. really rule. <laughs> Um, real quick though, before we kick off the first, before we kick off the party of one 30 for 300 Royal Rumble, why don't you take a moment and let the lovely listeners at home know about anything you've got going on that you might want them to know about. I can't stop doing my commentator voice, which is the problem. Cause like we're, we're like in the cafe, but also I just want to talk. But also if you, if you're interested in the kind of things that I'm putting on, you can look around at Rev Rye Bread. That's on Twitter. Rev like Reverend Rye Bread like Rye Bread. There's going to be a lot of great stuff coming out there. Stuff like, uh, depending on when, de unless another act of God stops me, if not us, then who is going to have quite a funky little production coming on soon? It is. It is. I've gotten some inside scoops and I'm very excited. <laughs> 
Wink. Uh, Wink. Podcast Minds is always fantastic. Jeff, you've been there before. Never believe it has now concluded. But if you want to see a Dadaist podcast, then check that out. Um, linksmithgames.com or my mother can go to hell.com, whichever play pleases your fancy. And that's really where you can find me. If if we're close to November, if we're closing in on that time frame, if we're on the November 20th, the Orange Groves is gonna be doing extra life on twitch t- twitch.tv slash the orange groves. Isn't twitch.tv? Am I is that correct? Yeah, twitch.tv yeah. slash the orange groves. Yeah, you can go there. And then you'll be seeing us streaming for extra light. It's gonna be wonderful. I think I'm taking the night shift. Who knows what's gonna happen? There might even be a fuser set or two. <laughs> so uh, also Champs in the Making, one of my favorite podcasts. Uh, the greatest <laughs> podcast idea of all time, which is a bracket style podcast in which we uh, we put all eight hundred and ninety-one Pokemon into a bracket and we point at one and say that Pokemon sucks and that one rules and it moves on to find out the best. Pokemon of all time. Jeff, I have to stop you right there because you have to update that to 892 because we just got Haxor, the new right. Scizor <laughs> evolution. All right, 892. I I'm not I was not I have not heard the updated intro. Or maybe I have and I just didn't notice. It happened two days ago. They added a new one. And they Great. just that means they immediately get on to the second round. They don't have to make it through the first round. What a what a heel what a heel this is neither here nor there, but this is a wrestling episode, so I'm allowed to say what a heel move. It is. It's a shame. You know, they cheer the ones they love they cheer the ones they hate, they boo the ones they love. It's true. It's true. Riley. Yes, Jeff. Are you ready to rumble? I am ready to rumble. So we are playing Rumble by Tracy Barnett. It is a game about battle royales. It is a game about royal rumbles. The battle royale is in full swing. It is a no holds barred brawl for all match where the only way to be eliminated is to be taken over the top rope by a competitor. A slate of competitors, 30 wrestlers deep. We are two of them. We are rivals. The bitterest thereof. Uh, Riley, can you tell the crowd at home who you, who who the wrestler you will be inhabiting is? <laughs> Did you tell me, or am I playing who I'm expecting to be played? I believe you are playing exactly who you are expecting to be played. <laughs> I am the DWA Hardcore Champion, the hero of Davenport, one of the one of the best in the backyard. Uh, I am Maxwell Davis, Maxwell Riley Hopkin Dave Davis. Don't get googling that on YouTube too much. You will find old backyard wrestling, and I don't know how well most of it has aged. But if you're looking for one of them, check out the one where I'd have a baptism match in the backyard against the adamant Tom Wells. Fuck. <laughs> All right. Good. Yes. First one to go shoulders down. <laughs> Two heels against each other. First one to go shoulders down in the pool. Comes back up a new man. <laughs> <laughs> That's so fucking funny. <laughs> That's it was really fucking good. 120 degrees and we bought a kiddie pool. <laughs> God, wrestling is the only great art form. <laughs> it's um, really good. And I am playing. I am also entering the Royal Rumble. And I am playing. Let me grab my belt. I am playing your Party of One Podcasting Championship, defending my championship. If I win this, uh, I do not have to take a challenger, but I get to choose my challenger. I am playing Party of One Podcasting Champion, holder of the actual podcasting Party of One Championship created by Riley Hopkins. I am playing Jeff Stormer, uh, gal- defender of the multiverse, podcaster supreme, and for the purposes of this uh, recording... Party of One podcasting champion. And I'm excited to be here. I'm excited to defend what is mine uh, against my bitterest rival, Max Riley Hopkins Davis. <laughs> I couldn't find my shirt. Imagine me right now in a yellow shirt that has a battery charger on the front of it. So like the the gray outline and then the red, orange, yellow, and then not all the way up at green yet. Mm. It's blood Love stained it. from when I got my head busted open by Blaine the Spartan Barton. Off a Pepsi Cola drop. Love it. Incredible. I'm very, very happy about all of this. Um, so, um, Riley? Yeah. Highs or lows? <sighs> Roll them high. That is a 10. Uh, so that is lows. So I am going to roll first. Uh, you are going to roll second. I am wrestler one. You are wrestler two. Wrestler one rolls a d20 and subtracts five from the result. This is where I enter the battle royale. I I need to find a d20. I had two d6s available because I've gotten so used to a specific kind of indie game. (laughs) 
grab grab as many d6s as you can. Give me a second. Give me a second. They are in here. You have so many drawers in your desk, you know? You know, Jeff? I know exactly. I know. I know. <laughs> there are the Yu-Gi-Oh cards. There are the magic cards. Where do I store this shit? All right, I'm good. I'm ready. I got it. Give me a d20 roll and add five. All right. I am rolling this right here. That'll be a total of ten. So I... We should not talk and type at the same time. That is bad podcasting etiquette. <laughs> I have so, no etiquette. Jeff, I just was handed pl- a plate of food. I have terrible <laughs> podcasting etiquette. Fair. Um, I am entering at number four. Riley, you are entering at number ten. Yep, the yep, distance yep. between us, the distance between us, which is uh, six, uh, tells us the, the the distance between the two of us. We are tier one wrestlers. We are mid card jockeys trying to get a leg up. We are we we have not been featured on the show before. We are not established characters like every other wrestler in the party of one rumble <laughs> is. We are coming after each other, and the odds are against us. This is this is a two local wrestlers who are in the city that the Royal Rumble is happening are brought up to be in this, and they're from two different feds in the city. And they, exactly. The, the city, the fans from the local sh- the local scene, losing their fucking minds right now. <laughs> Eight marks are over the moon right now. They are, they are thrilled. The, 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 the podcast, the, the crossover enthusiasts between actual play podcasts and wrestling fans, thrilled to see us both in this rumble. <laughs> oh, so podcasting wrestler- smarks are now like... <laughs> A thing that I'm thinking about. So I am the I am the wrestler one. I am entering at number four, which means I get to pick from this list. I have a list here of 28 uh, wrestlers that have appeared on Party of One. We've played a lot of wrestling games, Riley. <laughs> um, so I have a list here of, of previous characters. I will give I will read the one to two sentence description so that you have an idea of who they are. And I will describe what has happened, how I've gotten to how I've survived between four and ten. So mm-hmm. the first two people in the Rumble, uh, we're pulling up, we're doing a, a demolition, because the first two people in the Rumble are the King of the Surf, uh, Garth Neptune, <laughs> and Quorum Decorum, the Long Lariat of the Law, the British King of the Courtroom. The Long uh, Lariat of the Law, can I say, fantastic shit. <laughs> thank you. Uh, these two are former tag partners, they were split up, and so... Um, there's a long feeling out process before noted piece of trash, the Ace King Queen Jack, runs to the ring, the one-man royal flush. Mm-hmm. Uh, and we see a tag team reunite as they as they as they beat down, as they beat down uh King Queen Jack. They beat him down. I come into the ring, all three of us send Ace over the top rope. Ace is gone, Ace is eliminated. Uh, which means we've had our first elimination credited to three wrestlers. And the way that I survive between now and then, I'm playing. I'm playing the numbers game. I'm letting people. I'm letting rivalries play mm-hmm, out. I'm letting. Mm-hmm. I'm letting people. I'm letting people come into the ring. I'm letting the ring fill up a little bit. Well, wait, uh, d- does that does that ring fill up? Because you have those. You have the, the two people there. They're a ta- they were a former tag team. Yeah, they still got a target in there on you. They definitely do still have a target. Are you, I do you do you wedge. The, do you see them fusing together, and do you wedge something in between them again? Oh, I abs- I definitely do, because they split up. They were uh-huh. a tag team that, that forcibly split up, so I can definitely, I, I definitely vision that I kind of play them against each other, and uh, I'm flipping, I, I, I'm able to play the two of them against each other. I think um, Quorum is much older, Garth is the younger, is the younger, uh, is the star that Quorum was, was mentoring, so I think Quorum gets knocked out pretty quickly. By mm-hmm. playing them against each other, uh, I'm gonna roll from one to th- what is it? One to twenty six now. I gotta, <laughs> I gotta keep track in this number. Uh, the next few people to come out, we've got uh, we've got El Tejon, the Badger. Now, the thing about the Badger is uh, he's a Canadian bad boy who was sent to Mexico and put under a badger mask. However, <laughs> due to the events of the episode that he appeared on, he does command an army of the undead, which I, I think is going to, which I think is what's gonna happen is that. He and I are gonna brawl outside the ring. I'm fighting <laughs> off zombies. Obviously, this is a this is a cosmic threat that puts Podcaster Supreme in danger. Hold on, hold on. You said I'm sorry, Jeff. You said outside the ring in a Royal Rumble. 
Yeah, uh, Red Royal Rumble 99 style, I'm getting pulled through the middle rope, uh, and we're sort of doing a hardcore brawl on the floor. You do? <laughs> all right, all right, all right, all right. We're doing right, Steve right. Austin McMahon style, where we're brawling around. Uh, a few <laughs> other people come out. We'll say uh, a couple highlights include uh, Alistair Bateman, the real American psycho, comes out wearing, wearing the, the ace clothes, and the two of them have a long, long brawl. Two, like, young, like, young, handsome wrestlers, so you get that kind of big spotlight fest as we're doing the mm-hmm. hardcore brawl out of the mm-hmm. ring. They're doing flips and shit. Like, <laughs> yeah, they're doing, like, they're doing, they're, it's like, they're, like, they're putting on the show because we're not doing what the actual 99 Rumble did, which is just leave an empty ring. <laughs> which um, is, I love... <laughs> I can't get distracted with talking about wrestling. Continue. Um, so okay, that is uh what and what number? So that's that is uh, I was four, that's five, six. Uh Riley, yes. I want you to pick. I want you to I want you to flip through this and just pick a name that you like. I luckily have been flipping through it. I want to see the revenant. The revenant? Uh the 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 vengeful spirit of beloved babyface Freddie Fishhook. I, uh, yes, yes, that's who I want to see out here in this fucking ring right now. Uh, I think the Revenant, I think the Revenant probably, like, comes in and has a uh, little tiny guy, but big heart, right? Little tiny guy, mixture of big heart and undead warrior. So sort of like, mm-hmm. imagine if, uh, like a Zack Ryder got turned into the Undertaker. <laughs> if Zack comes Ryder, in, <laughs> if Zack Ryder sounded like fucking, like... Woo woo woo! You exactly. know it, bro. Uh, <laughs> in his in his match against Calacaveras many years ago, he sort of like came in touch with who he was in life. So he's sort of grappling with that. So I think I imagine that's probably going to lead to lead to Alistair Bateman getting over the getting thrown over the top. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. He's got too much on his mind right now. It, it cla- and he's and and you've got you've got two young and probably I'm going to say this probably also Garth Neptune like. <laughs> What I imagine happens is a classic sort of spot of uh, of the two sort of baby faces team up against the heel. The mm-hmm. Heel goes tumbling over, and immediately the he the 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 the, the tweener, the supernatural character, grabs Garth mm-hmm. and like choke slams him over the top rope, and he's gone. I like that. I like that a lot. So that is uh. So we've got what three? We got what? I think three more before you come out. I think I've got to have. I've got to have another rivalry match. I think Calicaveras is, is making her return to the ring after several years. It has been almost three years since I last wrestled. I left the ring not only to improve myself as a wrestler, as a fighter, but to improve myself as a person. To reach who I wanted to be. Who I knew I was. Now, I am back. But I am not the same Calacavera I was. I have new muscles. I have new, more dangerous, more powerful, more violent moves. I have new... Hormones. I have a new gender and new pronouns. She, her, by the way, use them correctly. And for those keeping track of home, yes, I am back as a trans woman. And what better way to be back than to crown myself in my return by winning the party of one 30 for 300 Royal Rumble. And not only that, getting a shot at the Party of One Podcast Championship and of course winning that. I need new goals. I need new gold for my new self. And I'll take it. Of course I'll take it. I am smart. I'm calculating. I am ruthless. I have sacrificed. I have sacrificed so much to be who I I was meant to be. To be who I was supposed to be. I have sacrificed friendships, relationships, opportunities for my transition. No one is as committed as me to get what she wants. And what I want 
is to be the new party of one champion. And no one, no one will stop me. Uh, we get the big stare down. We get the big dramatic moment. We get like a replay of their match those many years ago. They go up against each other. It is like a big, you know, it is kind mm. of the big, like the big, like, oh, snap. Like, you know what I mean? Like the, the dominant wrestling. Rest- like- we get the shot, the camera's low by the announce table looking up at the Titantron that is playing the quick promo package of their old match. And there's yeah. a moment in that where they lock up in the promo package and they do the same thing here at the same time, like in sync with each other, like like future, like present, like past. Uh, and then I'm also going to add in, um, let's see, who who do you want to see run in at this moment? Who do I want to see? Well, well, as well, we got to shut it down. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta shut it down. I need to shut it down, Sharon Brown. Out shut here it down, right Sharon now. Brown. Uh, the resident shooter uh, comes out wearing her robe. It's got a, uh, it's got bone wings on the back because of her uh, supernatural partnership with the Wizard Queen Cersei. Uh, <laughs> Sharon Brown comes out, and uh, I feel like we get, we get. Uh, it's just really a three-way brawl at this mm-hmm. point, right? Like, mm-hmm. like all, all, all history and rivalry is out the door. And at that moment, I think that is, I, th- I believe that is, I was four. Uh, is that ten? Is that nine? I have not been keeping track. <laughs> I also have not been All keeping track. All right, hold track. on. We're going to, we're going to pause I've got, for a minute. I've got a new, uh, a tab on my spreadsheet to keep track now. All right. Wrestlers. We've had uh, you. We've had Garth. those two fuckers. One, two. The two, we've had the two friends. We've had them take out that guy, take out another guy, uh, then take you, out Bateman. You entered Tejon, in. Te- Tejon, I'm number four. Tejon is Tejon is outside the ring with me. Mm-hmm. So where's he at? I got. I'm gonna. I've been highlighting them on the dock and then deleting. I them. think. I think I'm right. I think. I think that there are. I, I think as of right now, there are five people out there. There are four people who have been eliminated. Am I reading that right? I'm double checking. So we've got Ace. Ace and Alistair were eliminated. Garth and Neptune were eliminated, or Garth and Quorum were eliminated. Mm-hmm. Uh, we've got Sharon Brown, we've got, uh, we've got Calicaveras, and we've got uh, Revenant. They're all three of them are in the ring. Tejon and I, yep, yep, this is ten. You are in the ring now. And then, ready or not, here they come. It's zombie time. The music hits. I, I I come charging down as generator by bad religion plays arms up in the air to to ruckus applause as it should be. Mm-hmm. Uh, I I want to come up immediately. I want to like sidestep your fight. Uh, what I want to do is I want to catch your eye in your fight and cause you to get hit like <laughs> unceremoniously. Yeah, <laughs> like, and then just like leap over you. Do the. Uh, do the uh how do I enter? I don't I don't do like a Sinkara flip in. I do like the dive and slide under the mm, uh first, love it, love under it. the bottom rope and pop up quickly. And I the my first fucking target out here is going to be uh the revenant. I'm I'm just gonna keep it keep it moving all the way and hit that man with a bear paw, which is just a really shoddy uh punch where I hit him with my fucking forearm instead. <laughs> and 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 that 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 forearm like you catch it is, uh, have you ever seen? Oh, who is it? Is it is it Dan? It's not. Is it Daniel Pooter? Is that who Undertaker <laughs> knocks out? And like it's completely it's a complete fluke where he like clotheslines the Undertaker and the Undertaker falls over. That's what happened because this is your moment to immediately eliminate one of these wrestlers with your signature mm-hmm. move. Oh, so Revenant, you catch you catch him falls right over the rope like was had already been pretty badly beaten down. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I want him to like reach up and his hand to slowly go down like he's being sent back to hell. Um, yeah, I think. <laughs> and, and what happens is is uh, it's exactly what we see. And in that moment, I have recovered outside of the ring, and I I twirl around, and in one giant one giant running leap, big stinger splash, I crash into the entire I crash into the entire. Uh, uh, mob of the undead, the entire zombie mob. I crash into them. I roll Tehan into the ring, and I am doing. I am doing a. I am. I am. I am. Do, I do a mic check to him, and mm-hmm. then over the top rope, and then he's gone. Tejon Can you describe out. visually the mic check for me? It's important to me. 
Uh, the mic check is the the Jeff Stormer's variation on the mic check is a is it's the it's a lung blower onto the arm <laughs> that, that <laughs> I then that I then roll backwards or that I then like segue into a big uh, Becky Lynch style arm bar. But it's got that segue where I like grab the arm and I drop my drop it right onto my knees so it mm-hmm. looks like it breaks and then I kind uh-huh. of like roll backwards into the arm bar in one fluid motion. Hell it is a level of acrobatics that. Jeff Stormer talking into the microphone right now will never pull. Oh, absolutely. You'll see me break out a really cool Alberto Del Rio armbar at some point in this, and I can't do that shit. Are you kidding me? Um, so I think as 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 Tehan tumbles out, I really want to uh, I think I think the, the, the zombie horde stumbles to the back. And let me segue into the next part of the rules and remember how what now that we're in an action now that we're playing a game with actual rules. All right. All right. Together. Now, Riley, here's the mm-hmm. here's the here's the, the problem. I'm listening. Uh, and we can and I'm going to say that you and I can narrative some of some of these eliminations will be narrative. Mm-hmm. But I'm going to open a timer from yeah. this moment. Oh, this is good. This is good as fuck. <laughs> we're doing we're doing a we're doing a live we're doing a live timer. Mm hmm. Uh, and what's going to happen is we have some some things that we can roll on. We've got some we've got some actions that we can make. We've got some dice that we can roll. But every single one of these, re- but like because we are tier one, mm-hmm. we don't get the advantage of being able to say like we have we only have to beat this many wrestlers to be the last mm-hmm. two in the ring. We've got to stare down every single one of these wrestlers. We've been booked to face each other in the final, but mm-hmm. that might not happen because it's a rumble and it's chaos. Yeah, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. Someone, someone might decide. No, it's my time, turn to go over, and that's going to be scary. All right. And so from this moment, for, I will, I will describe to you the, I will tell you the actions that we're taking. Mm-hmm. Um, I will tell you what the the actions that we can take, uh, and then I will explain them in real time. And from this point forward, every two minutes, we have you or I have to name the next person that enters. Absolutely. Fuck. All yes. right. All right. Here we go. I'm hitting the timer. How many dice am I supposed to have? Uh, uh, you should have 26 sided dice. Thank you. Um, so what's going to happen is every time you have to, every time you want to make an action, you have to roll five dice. And the thing that you do mm-hmm. will determine mm-hmm. like what happens. You're going to roll five dice and then the four actions you can take will determine uh, what like happens to those dice. Some of them mm-hmm. will go away. Mm-hmm. And basically that represents kind of your stamina and place in the rumble getting closer and closer to getting eliminated. Uh, those four actions you can engage, which is directly attempting to remove someone by the battle royal. You can assist, which is helping another wrestler achieve elimination. Mm-hmm. You can withdraw, which is playing it safe to get your wind back. Or you can posture, which is playing to the crowd for support. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm looking at who's left in the ring We've got Shut It Down, and we've got Calacaveras. I, Riley, I'm going to propose something. I'm going to propose mm-hmm. something. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I think I need to assist. I think that, I think, I think you and I need to eliminate one of these two wrestlers. I don't, I, I am, I am intimidated by both of them, and I, I mm-hmm. want, I want, I want, Sharon, I want Sharon Brown out of the ring. Yeah, yeah, I think She's we need to shut down the shut down real quick. All right, so I am going to roll a uh, 5d6. Absolutely, absolutely. If any of these dice roll, if any of these dice roll a five or six, um, then we succeed. We successfully eliminate Sharon Brown. Um, if I roll all five or sixes, I, we combine our signature finishers into a sick double team move. Any dice that are not fives or sixes are removed from my pool. So, oh, it, it, but it, but because we are assisting each other, any, any dice that would be removed, I give to you. Okay, okay, okay. That I like. That I like. That is Riley. Take four dice. Jesus, oh, yeah. we do eliminate Sharon Brown. We do. Mm-hmm. Um, I think that it's. I think that the uh, Sharon and Calicaveras have been in like a tight, like a tight, uh, a, uh, a tight like brawl. Right? They've mm-hmm. been they've been throwing hands, and we're kind of able to just kind of slip in while Sharon is a little dazed mm-hmm. and like send 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 her over the rope. Calicaveras is is pissed because we just took away her her elimination. Uh, what are you doing in this? What What is your action? Um, um, f- I f- what the way I'm picturing this because we're doing a we're doing a, a dual signature thing here. Is that what I'm hearing? Yeah, I want I want like a a 
Irish whip off the off the. I'm gonna Irish whip them off the rope to give them momentum into whatever the fuck you're doing. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like that. That's the thing. Is like you hit them towards me. I grab them. Boom off the off the rope. Coming back at you, so you can just yeet them over the side. Real All quick, right, real easy. You don't blow a finisher this early in the match, kid. That sounds that sounds like an assist action. So you're gonna roll five of your d sixes. Mm-hmm. 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 Five d six. All right. It's. I rolled a four, five, one, six, five. That means so, I give so you. So I'm gonna take. I'm taking two dice. Yep, and yep, we yep. eliminate Calicavarus just as the other, uh, other rest uh, as the next wrestler enters the ring. Mm-hmm, uh, mm-hmm. We 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 have the next wrestler in the ring. I actually have to turn the sound alarm on because I don't know if, how when two minutes passed. <laughs> um, <laughs> the next wrestler. We are rolling a flat d twenty. It's Edge. <laughs> Oh shit! It's Edge. You, th- you, you think you know me? <laughs> it's that thing where you're playing two K, WWE two K, and you accidentally you're playing universe mode, all created characters, and somehow the game's like, and the Undertaker comes in and gets his ass beat by Android seventeen. <laughs> It's exactly what is happening at this moment. Um, what happens is the crowd the crowd recognizes the music immediately and starts chanting, "Champ, champ." Champ. Champ is a legend of the 90s wrestling scene. Really defined a lot of modern wrestling storytelling with his Mm. feud with Crowbar. What's up, wrestling fans? It's me, the one, the only Champ. The one true deserving champion of the Party of One podcast 30 to 300 Royal Rumble. I know what people have been saying. Champ, we haven't seen you in the ring in a while. Champ, where have you been? Champ, why are you always with Crowbar? Well, let me tell you, I keep my friends close and I keep my enemies so much closer. So watch out, I'm going to get close to you in the ring, Crowbar, and anyone else who is trying to distract me or get in my way or come at me with your wiles, your... beautiful eyes none of that matters now i'm gonna come in there and i'm getting that championship or my name isn't champ see you there party of one podcast fans see you there wrestling fans and see you there crowbar it'll be great to see you buddy there have been mm-hmm. rumors that the two of them were like a thing together and uh those rumors are true champ and crowbar love each other and that is canon uh <laughs> Champ is one of our is from our most popular episode, the wrestling game of Starcrossed. Mm-hmm, uh, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So Champ, Champ here. Uh, 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 this it's funny that you say it's Edge because this is the rest of the superstar Hall of Famer from the nineties <laughs> coming out and staring down two two young pieces of trash. Here's the thing: uh, as he's on his way up, he's like coming down the thing. I want to shut it down immediately. I want to catch him. As he comes under the the rope, and I want to get him immediately over. That's that's an engage roll. Oh, roll absolutely! Five dice. I he's he's gonna come up, and I'm gonna try to Alabama. I'm gonna try to give him the old Iowa slam, the Alabama slam variant, right off the edge, which is a ooh ooh ooh. Let me read here. Any dice that are not fives or sixes are removed from your pull. If any dice slide on a five or a six, yep, I lose everything. <laughs> I lose all, all right. Five. I love it. I love it. Um, yeah, you are you are unable to you are unable to. I mean, this is this is this man is a legend. This man is an it's icon. Champ. It's champ. The name says it all. The name says uh, everything mean, you need to know. I don't know why you tried. Meanwhile, uh, uh see, I am not a fool. I I see champ, I run. I'm bu- <laughs> I'm I'm getting the fuck out of there. Which means I'm withdrawing, so I'm gonna roll five dice. And I am going to uh, any fives or sixes that are that uh, I can add those dice back to my pool okay. and any dice that are not five or sixes are removed from my pool. OK. OK. All right. And All right. Immediately after I make this roll. Yeah. OK. James <laughs> so, going to town beating my ass. I can. So I end up with a net total of one more dice in my pool. Champ is beating your ass just mm-hmm. as just as the the, the the buzzer rings buzz. And we get in the ring. I'm going to roll one to 19. We get, uh, Riley, a portal open. <laughs> okay. A skylight, a skylight above us open. Doom. Light shines down. It is, it is nighttime. That is, you know, we are in the main event of this show and light is shining down upon us. And we are, and, and from above us wearing big metal wings, landing, landing, uh, drops the wings off. This is this is the the OG 
giant killer straight from Circus Maximus in literal uh, Roman gladiator times. This is Icarus II, son of Icarus, who has come to who has come to vanquish uh, vanquish evil and slay the monster. Oh Jesus Christ! I am going to hope I'm going to hope that Icarus goes for the biggest giant here, which is Champ. Icarus II goes for the biggest giant, and I'm going to try to like I'm going to try to facilitate helping there. I that think sounds like I'm an against, assist. That sounds like an assist. It action. absolutely is. I'm up against the turnbuckle. I'm getting my ass beat back. Bam, 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 bam. I see Icarus land, and I do that thing where I pull up my legs. And I'm just going to kick out, push out with my feet. I got a six, so I do succeed. I do. You lose do succeed. Four dice. You do lose four dice. <laughs> Ugh. Uh, but, you lose four dice, but Champ is sent over the top rope. Oh, thank God. I, I, I'm going to recover this quarter for a bit. Oh, it's my next turn. Uh, see, I don't like that because that means that I, I am up against Icarus. Icarus is all fired up. There's Jeez, still, I, um, there's still one other person here, too. Is there? I've been, I've been keeping track. There are four people in the ring right now. Who came out on six? Uh, six was Tehan who got eliminated. Okay. Maybe my count's off. Three it is. <laughs> uh, so we have Icarus is here. Icarus is staring me down. Mm-hmm. And I mean. Are you going to scamper onto the bottom rope? No, no, no. <laughs> I, I know exactly what I'm going to do. If it's just if you're if you're running, if you're running and I'm staring down Icarus. I, I feel like, I mean, Icarus is here from another time and another place and, and, and from across the universe. I am going to posture. This is I am I am going to let the crowd savor this moment. I'm going to roll five dice. Any dice that come up five or sixes are bonus dice that I can roll if I am in danger of being mm-hmm, eliminated. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. That is two dice, three eliminated, and our next wrestler is entering. Jesus Christ. <laughs> Maybe three um, minutes. <laughs> <laughs> no, this is Royal Rumble. Royal Rumble. <laughs> so I've got two bonus dice. I've got three dice eliminated. I'm rolling the withdraw, and that's my next move. I've already described yep. it. Yep. Oh, thank fucking God. Four. Four yeah, dice. You get back. four you get four dice back as Do I, Does losing that one get anything? I have one that didn't come up. Yeah, you have one dice that gets removed and you can pull four dice back in, so you're pulling in a total of three dice. Sick. Heard. Um, entering the ring at this moment is another, uh, Riley, we're in a good spot. I think you and I are in a good spot. I think that I'm going to pull an assist here because entering the ring right now is another legend, Ellen Mortal, who is a, 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 uh, like a Scottish themed Japanese luchador comes out with the, with the sort of tartan pattern mask. 10,900 kilometers from Tokyo, Japan to Philadelphia, USA, 16 hours in the air, 29 other wrestlers, all fighting for one chance to be the party of one champion. The first time I came to America, I had just finished my training. I spoke no English, I wore no mask, and I'd asked the company to send me to Mexico, where wrestling is a religion, and they sent me to America, where wrestling is a joke. But I learned, I adapted, I overcame, and I returned to my country as El Inmortal, the prince of the universe, and I wrote wrestling history on the skulls of my opponents, an immortal legacy of bone and blood. And so now, I have traveled 10,900 kilometers to get my revenge, to show you what I have learned, to show you what I have become, and I will return to my country as the party of one champion. Because in the end, there can be only one. Uh, which means that which means that you which means that I think that we are in a position where we can maybe uh, let let uh, let Icarus do Icarus's thing mm-hmm. and like avoid maybe avoid having to fight. Oh, Icarus. here's the thing. Can I suggest this to you? We let Icarus do Icarus's thing, and then the two of us come up behind Icarus and up over the top. <laughs> Great, good plan, good plan. Uh, that sounds like we're both making an assist action. Mm-hmm. Absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> Roll to 5d6. Riley, I got bad news. Yeah? <laughs> I, I don't... I mean, I guess it's good news for you. <laughs> Take five dice. Thank you. Okay. All right. Okay. And Jeff, uh, you take two dice. Okay. Okay. <laughs> uh, that means that... That means that Ellen Mortal does get a limit... Well, no. Actually, what that means, because you were trying to... We... Ele- we are able to unable to eliminate Ellen Mortal, but we do eliminate Icarus. Icarus is sent tumbling. Mm-hmm. Exactly. 
And as as you stand there and and look happy about it, I want to engage you. <laughs> oh shit! <laughs> and I fail, obviously, because it's not going to work. Because we both have to survive to the end. But well, sure, sure, sure. <laughs> but I do. I immediately go to like grab you and try to throw you over the edge. I think I catch a bow and stumble back. Yeah, I'm throwing. I'm throwing elbows. I. Uh... <laughs> I'm doing the Hulk Hogan where I'm ostensibly the baby face, but I'm fighting real dirty like. Mm-hmm, so I'm like, mm-hmm. I scratch, I like scratch, I rake your face. Mm-hmm. I stumble back like, Argh! I tell him Philly style. <laughs> <laughs> no one that's... likes it here. God. You, you, you take that back. You take that back Scummiest right now. Scummiest place on the planet. Why would anybody, uh, you ever hear somebody go on vacation to Philly? Anybody? Anybody ever. I am taking a posture move because the second you start talking, I'm gonna I'm doing that. I grab the back of your head and I'm walking you turnbuckle to turnbuckle and I'm hyping <laughs> up the Philly crowd, getting them oh, excited. Yeah. Uh so I'm gonna roll my five dice. Do it. That's an extra that's one dice for if I'm in danger and four dice get eliminated, which means I am down to eight mm-hmm. dice left. <laughs> Yeah, and good. I am going to posture immediately because you you go to hit my head against that turnbuckle, and I I hold it for a second, and I I kick out, I sing swing my leg back to kick out your fucking left leg, then grab you in a Russian leg sweep to pop drop you back quickly, pop up myself, and I I stand I'm standing behind you I'm doing the little Randy Orton wiggle my fingers waiting for you to stand up and you do stand up and I grab you from the front I spin you around what's that skull and crushing as you spin intermission? Me around. As you spin, right before you hit the skull crushing intermission, you've got me in the spot. You've got me uh-huh. in the Russian leg sweep pose. That's when some music happens. Riley, that's that music's. He's not supposed to be here. What? That's 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 not from that's not a party of one. That's Uh-oh. Protean City Comics. Doctor Demon Ayako Junior. That's a that's the monster hunting luchador teenage hero from from Protean City Comics. Fuck! 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 fuck. What's he doing here? <laughs> A lot of people are asking Dr. Imanaiko Jr., why are you entering into the Party of One 30 for 300 Royal Rumble? And the answer is pretty simple. Because I'm tired. I am tired. I have been fighting a war with the supernatural underworld for so long. For so very long. And it is cold and thankless work. Am I included in the big fancy March Masks in this tournament? No. Do I get included on the big Protean City uh, splash covers? No, never. You know what I get for all the work that I do protecting everyone from the sea of monsters? I get a bite in my neck. I get the curse of vampirism. And so what's going to happen now is I'm coming to win the Rumble and take the Party of One podcasting championship because it is time For me to be recognized as the hero that I am. And I don't care who I have to hurt to make that happen. (laughs) Then in that case, I'm pulling you back and I'm going to Irish whip you off one rope and into him. (laughs) And that's a posture for me. (laughs) Go for it. Give me the posture. (laughs) All right. That is I lose three dice, but I gain two for emergencies only. (laughs) All right. Uh, And as I'm going, as I'm flying after uh, flying after. Uh, as I'm flying after Demoniaco, I think, uh, I think what happens here is I, I get, I, I get, I get, I get, I get whipped into Demoniaco and it's all just Lucha stuff. Like I fall mm-hmm. into the ropes, signal for the 619, get the, get the kick in the face. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, you Ellen Mortal, big <laughs> Ellen Mortal grabs me, dragon, dragon suplex. It's, uh, I am, I am, I am getting, I am, I am getting a mud hole stomped in me in this moment. I'm going to call this enduring. Uh, I'm going to, I'm going to call this withdrawn. I don't even know what to call. I'm going to call this posturing because I think I'm doing the, the kind of the, the uh-huh. Ric Flair. I'm doing the kind of, uh, I'm doing the kind of, uh, like, uh, You're selling really shit. well where you're like stumble walking to each one as they fucking get you in it. Again. Exactly. They're just, you, all three of you are getting me. That's three dice get eliminated. Two more dice for emergency purposes. I think I'm probably okay in an emergency, but I'm very much not okay. <laughs> the uh, the audience is doing the, oh, yeah, boo, yeah, yeah, Okay, wait, yeah, wait, wait. Yeah. I am now below five. Anytime you are below five dice, you are immediately in danger of being eliminated. Roll mm-hmm. however many dice you have left, plus any bonus dice you have accumulated. 
The first time you are in danger, you only need one five or six to stay in the battle. The second time, two fives or sixes, etc., etc. If you do not roll an adequate number of fives or sixes, you are eliminated from the battle royale. Do you if get to you, keep bonus? Oh, bonus dice are reset to zero. After- you don't. If you remain in the battle, reset your pool to six dice and continue. Bonus dice are reset to zero each time you are remain in the de- battle after being in danger. <laughs> so I am taking all of my dice, which means I now have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine dice. I have to roll one, five, or six. <laughs> okay, I got it. We're good. <laughs> We're good. I come running at you with a big clothesline, and you duck under it, <laughs> and I hit the turnbuckle hard, but you live. You are, Riley, you are not going to believe this. Yeah. I rolled one, six. <laughs> <laughs> I think you duck uh, under my you duck under my clothesline to get immediately Germaned. <laughs> I get immediately Germaned. I am I I do the Shawn Michaels where I got one foot down and it's a no no and I I skin the cat back in. I am on by the hair of my teeth as our next entrant enters. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna roll from the continue to roll for this because I don't think there's anybody who I want to see come out to the ring. If there's anybody you mm-hmm. want to see come out. Otherwise, I'm going to roll this dice. Uh, I have seen... I, I, you know what? Let's see the Bloody Druid. Bloody Druid. Uh, portal opens. Unlike the first portal, this one is like... Is all... You know, it's got a lot of vines <laughs> jumping out of it. It's big, like... Uh, big, like, bad guy energy. The Bloody <laughs> Druid lands. All, like, matted robes. Big beard. He's got a knife, which seems not great. But there are no <laughs> disqualifications. I shout, uh, what's with all these portals? Use the ramp like the rest of us. Bloody Druid stands there and like we see the the kind of like cane with the fire, but vines mm-hmm. come out of the side, the, the turnbuckles. Mm-hmm. Uh, everything's gotten a lot more supernatural dun, dun, and a lot more dun, dun, scary. Dun, 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 dun. From the barbarian wilds of Britannia, caked in mud and the gore of my opponents, the Bloody Druid has returned to the arena. I have witnessed the omens and traced the future in the wings of the raven, and I have divined the true fate of all who stand against me. And that fate is pain. With my potions and my charms, I will bring my curses upon you, and my golden sickle will cut you down, and the bards will sing of my victory." In the Circus Maximus, in the rings of a henge, wherever you meet me, I will take you and break your body as an offering to my gods. Let all of Rome be on notice. The bloody druid is back, and he's looking for a sacrifice. Yep, yep, yep. I don't like that, but I think it's time for me. I know, I know as a performer, it's time for me to take some hits. And so I am immediately charging that bloody druid, and I'm going to wrestle the knife out of his fucking hands. Go for it. As that is happening, as that is happening, I am going to... uh, Th- there has been a, there has been like a legacy fight happening between mm-hmm. Doctor Demoniaco and Ellen Mortal because they are both like very big famous luchadors and this mm-hmm. is one of those like it can only happen here moments and uh, I am gonna ruin that moment. <laughs> Hell yeah! I I got one single six, so I'm able to wrestle the knife out of the bloody Twin's hands, and I think it's a collapsible stage knife, obviously, and I stab him in the stomach and push him over the edge, and he vanishes into the fog on the side of the ring. I, I, so, uh, Demon Ayako and I successfully eliminate Ellen Mortal, who had a respectable run, but, uh, in doing so, I am put in danger. <laughs> uh, it is, it is one of those big, uh, I think Demon Ayako gets me in a hurricane, mm-hmm. like, in one of those hurricane Rana out of the ring situations. Because mm-hmm. I have to roll 2d6, I have to roll two fives or sixes on three dice. Is there, a, is there a interfere? There is not, but I Can't. did succeed, so I get six. I'm back to six dice. We're okay, good. I'm still well, in it. Well, b- before before you have to kick up your your survivability by one, can I engage Demoniaco? Uh, yes, please. Yeah, because here's the thing. I want to. I see him about to get you out of the ring. No, 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 no. I'm the one who's gonna kill Jeff Stormer. <laughs> That's fair. That's valid. And I come in hard and fast. I get that six. I lose four dice, and I am able to like. I go, you get hurricane rotted, I grab you and then spin you back into the ring and then, like then use a I do a kick I can I can do the John Morrison big ass kick and just like bop get demonico over the top rope and it's beautiful <laughs> and I look down to you and I spice spit at you cuz why not man I 
we have but a few scant seconds to 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 catch our breath before the next entrant, and I'm going to use that time to withdraw. Try to recover some dice. Uh huh. I <laughs> I would love to too, but I already used my my turn. This uh, my move air quotes this turn. <laughs> so I gotta wait a <sighs> second. I gotta wait a second. I still have enough to hold on. Uh, I'm exactly at five dice. Whatever my next action is is gonna put me in danger. I don't love that. I'm not thrilled about it. I've got uh, especially, nine dice. <laughs> especially because coming out to the ring right now is uh, Take Me Out to the Ball Game starts playing. Mm-hmm. Slugger Troy McGinsky, the lovable baseball theme babyface, comes out to the ring. He's got the baseball bat. He points it, throws it to the side because real heroes don't bring their bats to the ring. Mm-hmm. Uh, comes in, uh, comes in, you know, does the jumps up, lean, lays on the ropes, you know, waves at the crowd, <laughs> strikes, uh, strikes some poses, is doing a lot of posing. And uh, you look at where I, I am. I'm gone. There's a dust cloud. <laughs> Good. I'm, that's, I'm, I, I don't. I don't need to tolerate this. I'm taking out Troy McGinsky. Mm-hmm. 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 I'm actually. If you, if you watch the cameras, you can see me sneaking around the bottom, grabbing that bat, and sneaking back in under the other row. Riley, so here's here's the thing. Mm-hmm. You come back in. You come back in with the baseball bat. Mm-hmm. Just in time. Like you come back in. Uh, unfortunately. You come in just in time for Troy McGinsky and Jeff Stormer to eliminate each other. No, I, I'm i rolling an assist. All right, all right. I roll an assist, assist if you. you. If you roll a five or six, you save me. You both go over that top rope and everyone's like, no. But then what's, like, hold on. Yes, there we go. I lo- take four dice, Jeff. All right, all right. And I'm you, in it. The, it's, it's the shot, like, Troy hits the ground. And then you're, and then, like, you see your feet dangling there. And what, what's that? I've got you. I have you with the fucking, like, baseball bat at your neck. Like, I'm trying to choke you out <laughs> to drag you back into the fucking ring. Oh. Riley, I'm doing something I never thought I would do to Riley, to Max Riley Hopkins Davis. Mm-hmm. I, am doing, I am doing something that I never thought I would do in my life. Mm. I am offering you a temporary reluctant handshake. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And I'm hitting you with the baseball bat. <laughs> that's that's fine. That's fine. I'm still gonna roll the withdrawal. I, I am doing. I am rolling the pot. <laughs> Clunk. There we go. I get another dice, and that puts me. My next action will put me in danger. Uh, my next action also puts me in danger, which is not great. Which is not good. <laughs> I just. I couldn't resist. I, I needed to fucking hit you real bad. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. Uh, I, need, I need the audience to be confused. I want you to be confused. Uh, yeah, you bash me in the face. I go down. Uh, you start chasing me around the ring as uh, as music hits, and you are staring down. Uh, you are staring down the elder, the elder luchador Paladin Junior, who is uh, who is is, is a mentor figure to many of the younger luchadors. In the world, sort of a sort of a the Batman to the Bat family in his blue and gold outfit with big cross design on his face. Uh, he books it straight into the ring. You you're about to bring down the bat on me, and he mm-hmm. grabs it and rips it out of your hand and throws it out of the ring. And you are like nose to nose with him, and he just <laughs> le- leans in your face and says, "Heroes don't use weapons. Be I, better." <laughs> I, and I'm like. A, not a hero. B, you're very tall for a junior. I guess I was imagining somebody much more diminutive. <laughs> Has anyone ever told you that? <laughs> it's a it's a lucha term. It means that I was not related to the person who had the original Paladin gimmick. Can he headbutt me? <laughs> yes, absolutely. <laughs> I stumble back into the turnbuckle, and he's just gonna start fucking me up. <laughs> just something for the audience is like cheering for now because like i have ruined some i've ruined spots like meanwhile i am i am i am fully taking advantage of this and just laying flat (laughs) just you're blown up you're like i've I've got i'm back up to six dice so i've i've got i've got a little bit of energy all right i think i'm on the ground i'm gonna try to withdraw right now because i'm about to be in danger but i'm not yet it's so like he's hit me i've got my arms up like kind of like try to block the hits and breathe in and like 
steady myself, which is hard when you're getting wailed on. Roll 5d6. Oh, no, 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 Jeff. I'm getting hit. I'm getting hit down, down, down. I, I do the thing where, like, my leg buckles. I'm on one knee. My other leg buckles. I'm on both knees. I'm on, my, I'm on all fours. I flat, flat on the ground, and he lifts me up like Bane. The man's going to ruin me, about to throw me over that top rope. How it's many time. bonus? How many dice? Are you, how many bonus dice do you have? How many dice are you rolling to stay in this? Let's see. How many do I roll? However many dice you have remaining, which is and one plus any bonus dice that you have. Four. You're rolling five dice. You just got to get one six. This is your first elimination. <sighs> Jeff. And and if I need to roll an assist, I will roll an assist. Jeff, it's all over for me. It's two two it's three not, three four. It's not. It is not at all. I am rolling an assist. That is. 1d6 that puts me in danger but uh well, wait. I, I, how many dice do i take from you <laughs> you take four dice from me yes <laughs> he, he's got me up in the fireman's carry he's about to yeet me over and i think how do you yank me back down i i fly i do a body block to the back of his knees i do <laughs> a fly in like chop block I take out his knees, you grab him, the two of you grab him, you grab his shoulders, he drops down, you grab him, you hoist him over the rope, I pull down the <laughs> rope, he comes tumbling, and and we are, and just as that happens, we're, the camera's focused on all three of us when uh, it's my favorite shot in wrestling happens. You know mm-hmm. my favorite shot in wrestling happens? Can you tell me what it is? When a flying guy flies in <laughs> yeah. from off camera, just like appears, and it's just, oh no! <laughs> what uh, the, how'd he get down there so fast? <laughs> Uh, he jumped because the he jumped because Riley, uh, we are standing. We have been we have been double drop kicked by the hyper flexible amphibian submission specialist from from deep in the galaxy. Pangalactic <sighs> champion, the Flexa Frog, has done a flying kick and immediately just locks me into some like just nonsensical submission move because he oh, doesn't God. have joints and he can just move around like a stretch Armstrong. Fuck, I I fight. I, 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 I'm both backwards. <laughs> I am, I am about myself. to get eliminated. Fuck. <laughs> Hell. <laughs> we, I need to move fast. That's it. That's what's happening. We're not having enough time to, uh, to engage, to withdraw. So I just need to engage immediately. I, I, I'm i going to assist you in, like, getting right. this fucker <laughs> off of you. And, like, that's the thing. We have to we have to play this strategically right now. All right. That is, I, I have a five and a six. That is success, success. Boop, boop. <laughs> <laughs> and we get him out, out and he's trying to get you in a submission. Here's what, here's what I'm gonna here's what mm-hmm. I'm gonna rule here. I'm gonna give us both an offer. Mm-hmm. We can eliminate the Flexifrog, but uh, but 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 lose but lose the dice that we rolled. Or we can keep the Flexifrog in and reset to six and effectively both be safe from, from elimination and reset to six dice. <sighs> no, I'm getting him out of there. Alright. I rolled the assist and I had already succeeded. So I'm All still right. losing three dice. I need you to keep dice because now he's over the top rope. I I am like a, a breath away from death. And I'm going to withdraw right now. We need to both take a second to withdraw. All right. All right. We are both going to withdraw. We have a moment where it's just the two of us. We have formed this uh, this trying to murder each yeah. other tag team arrangement. I think I hold out my hand at you this time for a handshake. Which gets like uh, <laughs> can get a good eye roll from you. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I uh, three dice, <laughs> three total, three total. <laughs> uh, I don't mean to take control of you. <laughs> yeah, but I do think you eliminate me this early. <laughs> uh, you know what? You got what you wanted. You've eliminated the number one content. You've eliminated the party <sighs> of one podcasting champion, which means regardless of whether or not you win this rumble, you have a real clean cha- uh, you have a real clean claim at that title at that title uh, opportunity. I'm only halfway through. You've got uh you've got twelve you've got twelve wrestlers left. Okay, how much longer is right now on my timer? Because <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm well, you're the only one left in the ring, so they're just sending somebody out. Okay. <laughs> The thing, quick pause on the timer. The thing I like about this game is it's legitimately causing like a tactics thing where like (laughs) I want to role play. And as a person who likes to role play, I want to do talking and talk through the moves. 
as a person who wants to stay alive, I want to get the spots in, out, and withdraw quickly. I like but, it. It but, feels like a rumble. It's really feeling like a rumble, and I appreciate that. I'm amazed that it does. Uh, I do roll three sixes and a five on my withdraw to get myself back up to a beautiful level. <laughs> Perfect. Just in time for uh, just in time for casual Dan Sexton to run into the ring. Mm-hmm. Just a guy, just a, just an ordinary looking dude. Uh, comes in, you know, real, 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 real baby face wrestling style, trying to lock up with you. What are you? Uh, what are What are you doing? <laughs> I don't want to try to lock up. I, I stop him. I, I do a hand up, hand up. Hold up, hold up, hold up. And I hold up your glasses because I took your glasses when I eliminated. Sure. You. <laughs> and I like put up my face on my. I do like a mime to him. Like I can't see out of these. Can you see out of these? And I hand them to him. And I want him to put them on. And I'm going to eliminate him while he has your glasses on. <laughs> Riley, here's what I'm going to do. Yeah. <laughs> Roll with an extra three dice. I am giving you the remaining dice that I had. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, sir. Oh. So you're going to roll eight dice total. <laughs> I, I, okay, hold on, hold on, hold on. Rolled eight D9, eight D6. actually rolled five D9. I was like, why did I roll a seven? <laughs> um, okay, cool. That's cool, not, cool. that's a weird number to roll. <laughs> uh, so do I still lose all the dice? Hold on, was this a trick? <laughs> do I lose those extra dice? <laughs> you do not lose those extra dice. Those dice are bonus dice okay, that boop, were, boop, boop. were a gift. Then I lose two dice. <laughs> and he goes over. Uh, we're sending, a, they're sending out their next wrestler. Oh, fucking hell, I posture to the crowd, and, and I, I'm yelling out like, is this it? This is really all party of one has to offer. I knew when I came to Philly, I was going to see nothing but shit in the streets, but I thought I could get something worthwhile in the all ring. All the lights shut out, all of them. Every light shuts out. Oh, the, 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 the Titan Tron, the Titan Tron is just showing skulls. Skeletons. <laughs> Coming out now is Undead King of Hell. <laughs> uh, barbed wire bat over one shoulder, your bat in the other. Gotta say, come, I wasn't expecting that. <laughs> come rolling, walking out, one spotlight, one single spotlight on him, comes strolling out to the ring, very slow, very calm, gets in the ring, uh, goes and like looms over you, both baseball bats in hand. I had I hold the bike kick, up to his mouth. <laughs> kick without a word, holds out the handle to your baseball bat in front of you. <laughs> like presses the handle to your chest. <laughs> I take it. I have the mic still in my left hand. And I'm like Fascist swats the microphone out of your hand with the barbed wire baseball bat I look and, my gets into a, and gets into a sword fight position. I look into my hand, I step back a few steps. And I do this. I start spinning my 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 baseball bat. I start spinning it like a uh, like the Revenge of the Sith lightsaber. How much longer is on that timer, Jeff? Uh, <laughs> it is uh, actually you're spinning it, and it has gone off. Yes. Oh, thank God. <laughs> that's a, that's what we call playing the fucking clock. Um, so, so the next person out is Hollywood Howard Hogarth, the quintessential pretty boy wrestler, tan, tan skin, bleached blonde hair, bad attitude, real Dolph Ziggler energy coming to the ring, um, doing a lot of showmanship poses, mm-hmm. kind of like dancing around the two of you. Like the crowd was here for this moment mm-hmm. and the, and this little piece of trash is like, is like doing all of the, the big spots, the, the Miz style, like, yeah, I'm here. It's me pointing to people, you know, given, given the, given the, 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 the oomph and the, the dancing. I, what do I you look, do? I look to, to the big guy and I, to the king of hell. Undead, undead king of hell. Undead king, undead, the king of hell. Uh, I look to I look to Hollywood, and <laughs> I go. Uh, I I hold up the bat and point at him like, eh, eh, eh? yeah, yeah. <laughs> <Whoop, bop, bop. laughs> you Double you hit. go high, you go high. He goes low. Roll me an assist. <laughs> yeah. God, fucking damn it! Oh no, Jeffrey, <laughs> it's not good. Good. Well, tell, what happened? I missed everyone, and that puts me all the way down again to two. I've tried. That's I'm not good. I'm in danger of being eliminated. Oh, okay. roll, roll me, roll me, roll me five dice. <sighs> and you want to get two sixes, two fives or sixes? Wait, uh, I I had my bonus ones though. 
Uh, if you have any bonus, if you have any bonus dice, if you've done any posturing, yes, you add those bonus dice. I have. Right. I have them. I need. All right. I got a six, a five, and a five, and a five. You're gold. Yes. You're gold. Yes. Reset Best. the six. Reset to six, and what I'm going to say is you can choose. Uh, I am adding this rule. You can choose whether you want to add those extra fives and sixes into your pool and have eight dice in front of you, or if you want to save those as bonus dice if you get put in danger. I would like to save those as bonus dice for the future, so I will All I right. will mark down those two boop boop right there. I am at six dice, <laughs> and so we failed to get Hollywood out. Uh, Hollywood is not out. Another wrestler has come out, and that is the Hammer Man, and he's got a hammer. (laughs) Who is this mysterious masked man with a hammer? No, we have seen Hammer Man unmask, and it's Troy McGinsky in a mask. (laughs) This is a thing we have technically seen, which means there are now three baseball bat wrestlers in the ring. I have scrambled backwards a little bit. I'm going to try to withdraw for a moment uh, to to regather myself. (laughs) Really, okay. A withdrawal that gets me just about nowhere. I get one net out of there. Oh, undead is not letting you withdraw. Like it is <laughs> you are you are you are caught between two men with weapons and Hollywood is like Hollywood is is uh you actually don't know where Hollywood is. I'm not sure that you 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 don't spot him. You're too busy catching hammers and be- hammers and barbed wire bats. <laughs> I am I am deflecting some of the hammers, but the barbed bats are good. no. I'm getting hit with the hammer. I'm blocking the barbed bats because I'm like oh, I won't get hit with that, and then oh I'm gonna be, oh I won't get hit with that. <laughs> like, I'm getting fucked up back into the corner again, and I think uh, I I think the buzzer the, the buzzer goes off and shockingly. Uh, uh, the crowd starts chanting crow bar, crow bar, <laughs> crow bar, bringing a crow bar to the I, this has now turned into an ECW bro. I scramble under the bottom rope and run to crow bar and I toss him the bat and I push him forward. I'm taking that as a posture. So he's now got a bat and a crow bar. Oh, as, I love as, this. Like, I absolutely love this. these three people descend on him like vultures. Oh, <laughs> thank <great>. God. <laughs> All right, a very good posture for me. I good. lose those two. All right. I like sitting on the ramp, like, <sighs> watching them beat up this dude. And there's, uh, th- there's no way for them to take them out. I have to take everyone out, um, don't I? I think I think Hammerman gets eliminated. Crowbar's a big enough deal. I'm just gonna say Hammerman gets taken out. Uh, get the mask ripped off. It's Troy McGinsky again. Uh, we all saw it. We're all upset. Um, you're you're laying low. Um, I'm gonna say go ahead and give me a withdrawal action as I roll our next wrestler. Oh, happily, happily. My back is to the uh, to the fucking ramp. So whoever comes out is gonna just see me sitting there. And probably just get a free shot in. Okay. All right, back up to six. I'm just like, oh, okay. All right. Uh, and somebody grabs you by the shoulder. No. Oh, uh, you recognize the you recognize the tie, sort of an IRS look. And this is uh, this is El Abogado. This is the wrestling lawyer. can't take it anymore. I just cannot do this anymore. I sit back there every day and watch one after the next, after the next, after the next person come in here and swear they're going to take over and swear they're going to win and swear it's totally for the best and swear they're the best ever. Well, listen to me because I challenge all of you. You want to lace up boots? You want to do what you got to do? You want to sit there and put blood and sweat and tears out there? Let's go. I'm winning this championship. You put it on the line, I'm coming for it. I can't sit in the back anymore. I'm done with that. Court's in session. Time to go to work. Separate from the long lariat of the law, another another wrestling lawyer from Party of One. I don't know how that specific thing became so prominent. (laughs) 
but uh, has grabbed you and is is uh, enforcing justice by forcing you back into the ring. However, as that happens, uh, the second you the second that the two of you are in the ring together, uh, Hollywood rolls out because these two are longtime rivals. Uh, Hollywood technically retired El Abogado. Mm-hmm. Ah. Uh, and so the two of them start brawling, and I'm what I'm going to do. Riley, can you just grab some dice that are not in your pool and roll me, uh, roll me four dice and add the results together? Roll four d six. Yeah. Uh, the results are ba, 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 fifteen. <laughs> um, who do you want to be eliminated? The Abel Abogado or Hollywood? Uh, Brit, take out Hollywood. <laughs> Hollywood, yeah. Uh, Hollywood rolls in. Hollywood has been hiding under the ring, doing the classic. Mm-hmm. Uh, rolls back in to take out his old rival. And immediately gets like uh gets a punch to the jaw straight over the rope. Crowd mm-hmm. pops, hero gets vengeance. It is like a big, satisfying crowd moment. As and uh Behind Hero looms undead, Lord of the Underworld, mm-hmm. <laughs> tall and in charge. <laughs> and I think there's a net crack, net crack, and <laughs> I am I'm gonna sneak around to like I try to assist Lord of the Undead in getting this guy out of there. All right, all right, all right. Roll me that assist. Oh, thank fucking God. All sixes, baby. Fuck. <laughs> Yo. Do I get anything? <laughs> um, I don't <laughs> think no you're... There's no rules I'm looking. <laughs> um, you... So the two of you combine... Here's what I'm going to say. Uh, I'm going to add a critical to this because that's sick as hell. Um... You can eliminate one of the... You can eliminate either Crowbar or Undead in this moment. Can instead I get three dice back? <laughs> yes, fine. You know what? That works just as well. Get those three dice back. <laughs> Thank you, sir. You got it, my friend. I'm just scrambling to stay alive, man. I've gotten back up to nine dice. And I'm going to take this chance to again scramble away. I'm playing Coward Ball right now. That's fine. That is all. That is all good. Uh, more wrestlers have come out. I'm just going to add two more to the ring right now. Okay. Um, Cersei, the Sorcerer Queen, has come out. Those. You know, God of God of Magic and and Mystery mm-hmm. has come out. Um, I think an alliance has formed with Undead, or it's sort of a uh, the 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 villains from Thor Ragnarok. I don't remember both of their mm-hmm. names. One mm-hmm. of them is the the, is yeah, the exterminator. Yeah, yeah, you're talking about. Is it uh, Malabolgia? What is? What do I know that name from? It's not Mal. That's that's the bad guy from Spawn. <laughs> Why do I have that on retainer? <laughs> I, I don't know. <laughs> uh, I've never read Spawn. And and the other wrestler that comes out, I think, is uh, Venganza. Is the uh, the young mentor, the 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 trainee, the tag team partner of Paladin Junior, who was eliminated <sighs> earlier. Uh, they're all throwing down in the ring. I, 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 I need Undead out of here immediately, and so I want to see Undead pushed up against that back rope, like start, like start getting bop, 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 mm-hmm. bop, bop up against the rope. And I, who have scrambled off over the side, want to gra- jump up, grab his head, and pull him over to the top rope by yanking his whole head down. Love it, love it. Roll me that assist. It's a very cowardly looking spot, but it does look cool because you're like, oh Jesus. Uh, yeah, I, I did. I, I I rolled one five, so I do succeed. Uh, that's enough. <sighs> Back down to six again, and I, I see him. I send him down, and when when I get him down, I like I hold out a hand to help him up. Uh, he accepts it. He accepts yeah. it. And I go, you know? I, I I give him hand to pick up his back, hand it back to him. And I do a call me pose. <laughs> I like it. I think. I think. I think he. Uh, I think he hands you your bat, and then like, like, like the two of you kind of like crack bats together, like you do a crossing the swords thing, mm-hmm. and, he, and he walks off. Yep. And oh. as he's walking off, uh, we have that another wrestler. That sounds like posture. Actually, I should roll posture. That is posture. That. Give me a posture. Fuck it out. I don't wanna. <laughs> I need these dice, Jeff. <laughs> All right. Okay. 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 Uh, we have another surprise entrant coming into the <sighs> ring. We have Rocco Rocksteady Ramboja Jesus coming Christ. in looking fresh. Uh, Rocco Rocksteady Ramboja, the Ramboja family is a wrestling dynasty, and this man was a bright young man with a with a hell of a future in front of him or behind him. It turned out that he was kind of in a Lovecraftian sort of cosmic horror time loop situation, <laughs> cursed with the screams of cicadas and an endless road ahead of him. 
So he looks great, but he also looks like he has been wrestling for hundreds of years in an endless mm-hmm. hellscape. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Not and doing he, great. He immediately attempts to throw me over the top rope because I do only have three dice left. This is Rocco Rocksteady Rambos. I'm sure you all know my name, even though I've never been part of your little party of one podcast championship before. Sure, in years past, my invitation just got lost in the mail. But if you don't know me, please allow me to introduce myself. I am the Rev of the Thunderbird engine as it echoes down the empty road. I am the slap of the flat tire on the pavement. I am the cheer of a crowd thirsty for blood and violence. Who but I am the body thrown and the turnbuckle that breaks it. Who but I am the chair and the life water it spills. Hombre and I, hombre and Humbry I fod flos fioc tu, hum de zeldas do keen de kondu. Oh, what, 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 where am I? What, what's, what's going on? Sorry, I, I got a little distracted. Where, where was I? Oh, that's right. I'm coming for all of you. Rocco Rocksteady Ramboza bends need a no wrestler. When I get there, you will all break and bend before the mighty roar of my Thunderbird. Just you wait. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, one, two, three, four, five. Uh, one, 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 two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Roll ninety-six. You need three six. Oh, a six. A f- I have four. I have four. I'm You're take- good. You're keeping- good. Take- I am taking one as a extra heal, <laughs> so I am now at seven. Which of these four wrestlers do you want to eliminate right now? If oh, you survive elimination, my God, I I need to take. I want to take Rocco right back out. I want to take him mm-hmm. right back out. You go take a nap, buddy. He's no, he's, he can't. <laughs> Got a long road ahead of him. <laughs> he doesn't go back up the turnbuckle, the tur- the uh, the walkway. He walks out into the crowd and vanishes. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. I think as all of this has been happening, uh, Cersei, I think Cersei and Venganza have teamed up and eliminated Crowbar. I think that there is, I think that they, I think that Cersei has been, has been doing a lot of, uh, alliances, has been doing a lot of trickery. And, uh, Venganza, Venganza saw, saw a target in Crowbar, so Crowbar's gone. We get another wrestler coming out. (sighs) Uh, Fuck. <laughs> it is a full on. Um, we hear the revving of an engine mixed with the mixed with the like a lightsaber. This is the way to describe it. Oh as my, I fall uh, my head in my fucking hands. <laughs> as as Roadmaster Horix, king of the intergalactic super spaceways, the badass with a battle bike, rides Go back down to like the American. You fucking clown! <laughs> what are you doing? Riding his hover bike around the ring is not entering. He's just riding his hover bike around. I I slide out. I'm gonna close light him with a fucking bat. <laughs> okay, give me an engage. <laughs> I don't have time for this shit. My life is on the line. I can succeed. All right. Bop. So you take him out. He crashes. <laughs> it was a huge disastrous <laughs> crash. And because the next wrestler enters, because the next wrestler enters. Uh, you are able to, the next wrestler enters and you, uh, you stopped him from entering the ring. And as we all know, by the rules of Royal Rumble, if you are not in the ring by the time the next wrestler enters, you are all eliminated by default. (laughs) Horix is out. Okay. Cool. Great. I love that. (laughs) Uh, and then finally, uh, we get, we get, we get, you know, three big words pop up on screen. We see, look over there. And the first ever character to appear on Party of One, Slimy McKeelberg, makes his entrance. Slimy McKeelberg here, a.k.a. 250 pounds of twisted steel and sex appeal, a.k.a. the undefeated NXT champion, a.k.a. the leader of the Balor Club, a.k.a. the bringer of the Beauty Breaker, a.k.a. the Correlator of the Cutie Crusher, a.k.a. 
I saved the world that one time, a.k.a. owner of one of the most successful Cutco Knives businesses. If you need a brand new knife, Slimy McKeelberg is here to put it in your back or in your hand for just a few low, low monthly prices, a.k.a. the winner of this Royal Rumble. Where it is jorts. And his t-shirt that says, look over there. That's his signature move. He'll point and then he'll poke you in the eye. Uh, he comes out. <laughs> I'm I think, sitting on the on the metal chair stairs facing the ramp. <laughs> uh, walks past you, to, walks past you uh, hands you an autograph, climbs in the ring, uh, climbs in the ring. And I think, uh, I think, I'm going to roll the dice here. I dab up my blood with, <laughs> with this fucking picture. Roll me a withdrawal. Okay, I just did actually, so I won't. I won't double withdraw here. You can double withdraw. I'm fine uh, with this. All right. Okay. Okay. It's scary to withdraw because, like, there's just as much chance that you just straight up still lose a lot of dice. It's true. It is true. You need to roll really well to withdraw successfully, which is what just happened. I went from six to five again. Okay. Uh, your next action will put you in no, danger. No, it's under <laughs> five. Yeah, so your next action will put you in danger. I'm not under five. I'm at. That's five. what I'm saying. Once you spend dice, when, oh. you, when you do your next action, whatever. You're assuming whatever, I fail in some way. <laughs> unless you, unless you get five sixes, unless you get all fives or sixes. Part um, of the cards, baby. Um, I think what has happened is he is slimy. Uh, slimy knocks out Venganza. Okay. I think is what happens. I think Venganza. Uh, I think Venganza uh, falls victim to the oldest trick in the book. Look over there and then gets quickly eliminated and just like walks by you just kind of muttering like, I can't believe <sighs> amateur, yeah. amateur move. <laughs> it happens. He's a great for a reason, you know? Yep. That's why he's a Hall of Famer. That's mm-hmm. why he's that's why he's who he is. And uh, you're you're in the ring. There is a there is slimy and there's Cersei and they're st- they're circling each other. And uh, I think. I'm gonna. Do do? I am going to sneak up, and I'm going to steal a steal a move from a uh, from DWA from Chris Cash, the current <laughs> the baby Chris Cash. Hit him with the Rock'em Sock'em robot, Rock'em Sock'em jetpack. And I'm gonna do a code breaker, basically. <laughs> On Cersei, just run okay. up. Okay. Five d six. That is a surprising amount of sixes, but it is not all. all. Right. <laughs> so, so I am now in danger. <laughs> A way I don't like, but I had to do it. You understand. Now, now, now Riley, you are in danger in this moment. <sighs> but now the game is about to change. Okay. Because uh, what happens is we thought that that was all the entrance, but there's one more. There's one more surprise in store. There's a 31? <laughs> no, this is our number 30. Uh-huh. Uh, there's one number th- the 30th entrant in the party of 130 for 300 Battle Royale. Um music starts uh music starts and over the loudspeaker you hear not one voice but two you hear the voices of jeff stormer and aaron katano saez saying the words from worlds beyond to right at the gaming table these are all my fantasy children fuck (laughs) coming out wearing the hat of the legendary hat of many faces the greatest wrestler that the world of fantasy has ever known in the final final entrant facing you in the royal rumble is Slip Willis. Oh, yeah. All right. A Royal Rumble. Did someone say ostentatious hat? I'll keep this short and to the point. My name is Slip Willis. I wield the hat of many faces, and I hail from the greatest planet in all the multiverse, fantasy. Why do I think I'm going to win the Royal Rumble? Well, let's just say I'm the first character that Jeff and Aaron ever made. That's right. Episode 1. And the coolest thing about me is, I can be anyone. Is that a little kid on the street? No, it's still Slip Willis. I can be anyone I want. So you never know who's coming for you. Or who you can trust. So watch your back. Because the party of one championship is mine. So don't goof it up, okay? Oh, did you hear that? It was just me laying down some sick guitar licks on my whalebone lute. That's right. I also play the lute. So that's right. I'm calling all you other losers out. 
You don't have a chance in the Royal Rumble. Because fantasy's most powerful. Is coming to claim the party of one championship. I'll see you there. But who will you see there? The uh. inventor of professional wrestling in the world of fantasy. They're Master still of disguise. They are here, and they are ready to throw down. <laughs> there are three people left, right? It's no, me, no, Slip, Slime. and... Oh, and no, Slimey. I got Cersei out. Slimy's out. Yeah, you're good. It is the two of you, which means the game has now changed. Oh, fuck. Are you ready for the game to change? I'm ready for the game to change. All right. When to vote, when two wrestlers face off as the final two, the dice rules change. Um, you get your 20 dice back. I get my 20 dice back? You get your 20 dice back. Oh, thank fucking God. Uh, you are, you are, you are, you are in, you are in control now. You are, you have been energized by being the last two. You have been energized by being in the final two. You have your 20 dice back. And we keep our totals hidden from each other. We don't say what they are. Okay. And what you do is you describe how you, uh, try to eliminate the other opponent. Each player chooses a number of dice from their pool, hidden from the other player, and rolls them. Whoever gets more fives or sixes wins the exchange. And they get a mark. But all vices that all dice that are not fives or sixes are removed from the pool. Oh so God. you get to choose how many dice you want to roll right now. Fuck. You want fives or sixes. Anything that's not fives or sixes gets eliminated. Do we don't tell each other how many dice we have left. You just pick how many dice you're rolling and yeah. then and then and say how I many don't you tell get. you, right? I don't or Yeah. Okay. Jesus Christ. Slip is is goading you on. I think that's how they wrestle. I think it's a big part of their wrestler. They're 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 also a big personality wrestler, and they are they are goading you on. I think at one point they they tweak their hat, and their face turns into my face, and they're like, "This is who you this is who you want to face, right? This is the title that you're chasing after. Come and come and take it from me before I take it from you first. As their face changes back into into slips, as they egg you on. I I am holding myself up using the baseball bat as a as a crutch, and I'm standing there, and I just breathe in, breathe out, breathe in, and I whip the baseball bat at them as hard as I can. <laughs> just throw uh, how it. How many how many fires and sixes did you get? I have one. I also have one. What this, what happens when a tie? Uh, Do we I'm both get a mark? Yeah, I'm gonna say we both get a mark. Yep, that's exactly that is that that feels exactly right. All right. Do I have my leftover bonus dice? Do they do anything? Roll them right. I'm going to say roll them right now. They go away immediately, but you can add them to this first roll. All right. All right. All right. That's an extra six. All right. I'll take I take my first mark. If I get if either of us gets the three marks, we are eliminated. Okay. All right. I've whipped the baseball bat. You fall backwards into the ropes and pop back up. And, and then I look to slip. And I, uh, uh, they, like, they they spring back up and they are immediately going to try and like spear like hit you with a spear. Oh, they're hoping they're hoping that you took a second to 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 gloat and they're just coming in hot with a spear. How many fives or sixes did you get? I got three. Yep, I only got yep 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 yeah that wins. All right. Yeah, uh, I so I get I get smashed with that spear immediately. <laughs> uh, they roll through. They uh they climb the turnbuckle and they are good. They are getting ready to kind of frog splash down on you. Mm-hmm. 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 How many you got? One. I got two, baby. Knees up. Bah! Knees up. <laughs> oh, that is my second mark. And I, um, I, I scramble to my feet quickly. <laughs> and I I see you. I see slip. Starting to move to their feet, and I am going to run up, and as they stand up, grab them from behind. Bop, bop. Whoa, what's that? A crucifix power bomb. I'm gonna throw this fucker over the top rope. All right. Okay. How many? How many did you get? I'm rolling right now. My heart is beating so fast. I am so. This is so tense. Three. <laughs> I also got three. Fuck, does that mean we both get a mark or? <laughs> both get a mark, but that means that I get eliminated. <laughs> yes. Riley Hopkins. Oh, I end with one dice remaining. 
I I had I had th- I I had used all I would have I would have ended with uh, I had rolled three successes, but I had no dice left in my pool. That's why you save one for the end, baby. <sighs> Riley Hopkins, you have won the party of one thirty for three hundred Royal Rumble. And I turn and I point shakily, weakly, sweating. At that beautiful sign that says Potomania. <laughs> Unbreaking. <laughs> Holding my finger pointing at it. And I collapse on the fucking mat. And uh, the black shirts think- come out. <laughs> The black shirts come out, they're spraying you with cooling spray. You get held up, you get given a large, an elaborate trophy. You are, you are held, you are held up. And, uh, the last thing that happens is, uh, our, our backstage interviewer slides in and says, You've won. How do you feel? I feel like, I feel like Jeff Stormer. Better watch his ass and look through that peephole before he opens the door. Because I'm coming to the worst city in America. I'm coming to Philadelphia. Bring you a little bit of... Bring you a taste of Chicago, you son of a bitch. They cut the mic. (laughs) Um, And that's... And that's game. Riley Hopkins, (laughs) you have won the party of 1,300 Royal Rumble. I was really... Fucking rules. <laughs> I was really banking on you using everything to not die. And if I had, if we had died, I still would have won. Which is beautiful. If you I had lost, like then uh, you know, waka waka, I still would have won. No matter what. I was coming out of that last spot a winner. I am blown away. <laughs> this was everything that I wanted it to be and more. Riley, thank you so much for this. Thank you so much for joining me for the 300th episode of Party of One. <laughs> thank you for having me. That was legitimately one of the most like heart beating <laughs> fucking podcasting experiences. This is this is genuinely a very good role playing game. I would like more ways to recover. I would like it if you didn't lose dice on a withdrawal or maybe lost half dice on a withdrawal. But other I, than that, I like it. I like it being risky because I like it. I love I love that that sense of like the clock is ticking like you are you are running out of options and you like the best you can do is grab a few extra dice and hope that you stay alive. <laughs> I can't, I cannot believe <laughs> I was resigned to death when I had to get three D six, three sixes or fives on like four dice right there after eliminating Cersei. It's like, that's it. Uh, I am so happy with how that turned out. Riley, before, uh, re- before we wrap up, where can people find you and your work online? You can find me on twitter.com slash rev rye bread. That's rev like reverend rye bread like rye bread. You can also uh, Google the best of Max. Go to YouTube and type in the best of Max Well Davis, which I think should bring you a highlight reel of my backyarding days. Please go do that. I'm going to be doing that after this call. That's um, not Max Davis. Was it Maxwell? Did you type it in as Maxwell? You might. Yeah, there it is. Best of Maxwell Davis, MV. Riley, I will put this in the show notes so people have it. Uh, check the show notes for a link to the best of Maxwell Davis. <laughs> Uh, Riley, thank you so much for joining me for this momentous occasion. I'm extremely grateful that we have gotten to make all of these wonderful, weird podcasts together. And this is a true all timer for the record book. So I am uh, extremely grateful that you were able to join me today. Jeff, it is a pleasure to be here for another centennial. And I don't think I can understate how wild and impressive it is that you keep these motherfuckers coming out. 300 episodes is so many and to have them all be of this high quality to like maintain the the level of like professionality and good shit that you put out is amazing the shit you do for like independent rpgs cannot be overstated there is no show like party of one and i am so happy to be part of it in a small way you should be extremely fucking proud of what you do here that belt says best podcast in the world and it's fucking right goddamn right it does uh thank you so much for joining me (laughs) that's fair no that's fair that's fair we will we will face off for it um 
Riley, thank you so much for joining me. Uh, and for now, me. I'm going to throw it over to me. Uh, I'm going to throw it back to me at the commentary station so that he can wrap up the show and he can say goodnight to our audience after 300 nights of sports entertainment. Uh, commentary, Jeff, take it away. Thanks, Jeff. And thank you to Riley for coming on to the show. Uh, that game was incredible. Be sure to check the show notes for links to all of Riley's work and podcasts and games, including the best of Maxwell Davis. Uh, thank you to Taylor LeBresh, our ring announcer for the evening. Check the show notes for links to everything Riverhouse Games. And thank you to Tracy Barnett, designer of Rumble, um, who designed this game after I asked about it on Twitter and made this game for this episode. It was an incredible game. So be sure to check the show notes for a link to Rumble. And um, before I do all of the other stuff, I've been handed this microphone and I have been asked to say a couple words about 300 episodes. And admittedly, I cheated. I had a bunch of other people say things about it first because it's a lot and it's emotional and I figured that would make it easier and it absolutely has not. Because the truth is, I look out at 300 episodes, six years in a few weeks. I look out at all of that that podcasting, all of that experience, all of those games, those episodes, those good times. And the truth is, I didn't think we were going to get to 30. Like, I didn't think people would care. I didn't think there would be guests that would be interested. I didn't think that we would be able to sustain something like this. And here we are six years and 300 episodes later. That is more episodes than Frasier. That is more episodes than Friends. That is more episodes than Cheers. We have created something breathtaking here, and I just want to say thank you to Jen Frank, producer of the show, the unsung hero without whom Party of One would never happen, would never have been created, would never happen on a week-to-week -week basis. Jen does so much work and is such a fucking star and uh, also is the love of my life, and that needs to be said on microphone sometimes. So, Jen, thank you so much for all that you do for this podcast. Um, it has been an incredible journey these last six years, and I would love to keep it going. And also thank you to all of the guests, both the ones that contributed to this episode, Alex Roberts, Blaine Martin, Steph Beckfay, Fabian Garza, Johnny Sims, John Adamus, Noah Houlihan, Aaron Catano Saez, but also every single guest that has said, I will spend an hour and a half playing Make Believe with Jeff on a podcast, like... We couldn't do this show without you, very literally, and I appreciate that so, so much. And lastly, thank you for listening, for downloading, for engaging, for talking about the show, for giving the show a reason to be, because the truth is, as much as we love making it, part of why we make it is to give it to you, and we're happy that we have, and we're happy that it has found a home, and... And I'm just thrilled. So thank you for 300 amazing episodes, and here is to 300 more. And now on with the other stuff. Be sure to follow Party of One on Twitter at Party of One Pod. Assuming Facebook exists in a week, uh, like the show on Facebook. Uh, join our Discord community at bit.ly slash party of one discord. Head to our merch store at bit.ly slash party of one merch. Listen to All My Fantasy Children, the other podcast I produce with Aaron Catano Saez. Uh, it is a character creation, storytelling, and world building podcast where we take a listener prompt. We spin it into an original fantasy character and we populate a shared universe one story at a time. Uh, new episodes drop every Friday-ish at OneShotPodcast.com. The show is part of the OneShot Podcast Network. Party of One is produced and edited as always, and this episode in particular was produced and edited by both Jeff Stormer and Jen Frank. The theme song for Party of One is Infinite Lives by Megaran, featuring the D&D Sluggers. As for other music on the episode, the songs Mighty and Meek, which was the theme song for Icarus 2, Crusade Heavy Industry, which was the theme song for The Bloody Druid, Take Me Out to the Ball Game, which was uh, the theme song for Slugger, Troy McGinsky, and Vegas Glitz, which was the theme song for The Ace King Queen Jack, are all by Kevin McLeod. All other music uh, in this episode was by Birdie. Hey, it's Birdie on Twitter. Uh, check the show notes for links to their information. They were incredible and just gave me a gigantic folder of cool music to use in the episode, and I tried to use as much of it as possible. Uh, thank you so much, Birdie. It was uh, breathtaking. I'm so happy about it. You made the episode even more special. And the Party of One logo, which you can see on the Party of One podcasting championship, is by Evan Rowland. And as emotional as it makes me to end this particular episode, that is all we do here. So until next time, thank you so much for listening for the past three hundred episodes remember to fight the forces of fascism every single day remember that self-love and self-care are radical and defiant acts of resistance and as always party on everybody
the show is over. The lights are out, the crowd has gone home, and the only person left in the arena is Champ. He sits alone on a bench in a still-lit locker room, the last light in an otherwise black stadium, armory, but who's counting? He sits, his shoulders sag, and he takes stock of his day. Because, friends, Champ didn't win. He didn't win the Rumble, he didn't win the title, and worst of all, he didn't even get to... Well, it was a failure on every possible level. After a long time sitting, wondering, reminiscing, he finally lets out a heavy sigh and starts to stand to his feet, but just in that moment, a shadow falls over him, and a duffel bag hits the floor next to him, and Champ's eyes widen, and his face reddens, and Crowbar smiles that obnoxious smile of his, and says, Hey Champ, it's been a while. And from there, my friends, the tower falls.